Trauma time! Yeah! <laughs> we did missing, so we're doing the fourth floor today. Apartment 401, 402, and 403. Oh, this might be the the demo we played. Ooh, interesting. Are you guys ready? Do you have a notepad ready? I do. A family home was broken into by someone with a familiar face. What was left was a gruesome scene. Can you figure out what happened? The fourth floor in New York. 2004. There's no sound. Oh. I guess I don't have a footstep sound. Can I close the door? Okay, let's start. Let's do clockwise. Oh, cute. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> Serene jewelry and loans. A diamond wedding ring. Bought by Brenda. $2,511. Uh, okay. Not refundable either. Sarah's birthday. July 22nd. Let's write that down. That's the only thing that's important. Ooh, okay. Uh, July 15th? Yeah. I'm always like, it's 7 July. Other than drinking a bit more than usual, nothing noteworthy for today. She pooped once and went to sleep after I sang her a lullaby. She's super cute when she sleeps while clinging to her blankie. Fed her food portion, diaper change. Okay, I think we're talking about a baby. <laughs> Can you imagine it's actually an adult? Uh, pooped once, went to sleep, fed her food portion, 180 milliliters of milk, diaper change, went to sleep, banana porridge, oatmeal rice. Sarah was not as fussy today, she drank the same amount as usual. I actually don't know what you feed babies, but banana and porridge and oatmeal, isn't that... How old? Or maybe it's a toddler? My first thought was a cat, me too. Thinking about she pooped today, I was like, I always check if baby pooped or not. <laughs> When do you start feeding? Oh, six months and up is solids. Oh. Oh, and the porridge and oatmeal are checked, but not the banana and rice. And then here, banana and oatmeal. What's the piece of paper? Feed the milk at three. Sec Whoa, why is this so woozy? Second bottle at 7.30. Milk is in the fridge. I feel like these times are going to be important. Carry the baby monitor at all times. I'll I will be home around eight. So someone was babysitting. Oh, baby things. Anything on the bottom? No. What is that? Oh, strawberries. <laughs> Chocolate bar. Oh no, is it a peanut allergy? This could be a peanut allergy. Ethan has trained me to be very vigilant. What's that? Okay. I don't- I can't open any of these drawers. There's nothing here to look at. Okay, let's move on. Oh. Okay, so it's not maybe probably not an allergy. <laughs> Do you think someone maybe maybe the baby is like uh, in foster care or something? Someone stole the baby back. Nothing on the fridge. Just some fruit. Camp Sunshine, Consent and Liability Release, Greta Sherman, the camper. Oh, Brenda Sher- Greta and Brenda Sherman. Okay. And Brenda bought the ring. Relationship to camper- oh, Immersion- Lori, Lori Sherman, mother, sister, aunt. Signature of parent, guardian, Brenda. Chat, the baby did it! <laughs> 
Don't trust the baby. Oh, I can look at the shoes. Oh, maybe the size is important. A nine and a half. Okay. What apartment are we in? 401. Okay. Footprints. Someone came in through the fire escape. What is this? It's hanging on the inside. It's like someone left the window unlocked. Pieces of paper. So dark. 860 High Crest Street, 806, 680, 608. So someone was looking for them. Willow Groceries. Ryan G. Six packs and smokes. Subway pass. Library. Hmm. Ooh, safe. Real money? $20 bills. So that must be a couple hundred, maybe $500. What is this? Certificate of birth. Oh, it's a birth certificate for Sarah Peterson. Peterson. Mother, Brenda. Father, Clyde. Clyde Kent Peterson. Oh, and then here she signed Brenda Peterson. So, Clyde and Brenda are parents. I need to write more down because I'm so bad with names. I remember getting really confused last time. Wait. Greta. Sarah, 2003, Greta, 96. So Greta's the first child for Brenda and Clyde. Okay, so Sarah's the second child. Okay. Ammo. He's back. <laughs> a Tarink R9. I don't know what that is. Just a handgun, I guess, nine millimeter. So, the handgun manual is here, but not the gun. Just the ammo. So where did the gun go? Camp Sunshine. Summer camp for elementary and middle school students. Oh yeah, the questions. Um, I didn't even think about that. The exam questions are, who broke into the apartment? Who was present during the break-in? Who was killed and who was the killer? Oh, look at that pretty boy. <laughs> you feeling top today? No, a little too difficult. Oh, baby. <clears throat> Eagle. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Greta, an A. That's pretty good. She's really good at math. Markers. A beer? How old is she? Wait, we know how old she is. This is 2004. She's eight? Last name is erased. Oh yeah, Peterson to Sherman. I think this picture is gonna be committed to memory, guys. It might come back in a later scenario, who knows. Mint. Wait, are they plant things? Oh! They knocked it over when they opened the window. They were growing lavender, oregano. Oh, that's what that is. And that's why there's dirt on the footprints, I see. What is that, Sarah? Huh. Okay, now for the big one. So someone was maybe looking for something specific 
Ooh. Bullet's still in the... Still in the wall. Jeez. Mm-hmm. Bullet casing. Does it say... Uh, oh god, I always... Oh yeah, 9mm Luger. Is that... Yeah. So it's... The gun was here. There was a diary in the room? Who keeps the gun in the child's bedroom? I think... Oh, here. I think the mom just had the baby in the room, and this is like where she keeps all of her stuff. Or not. I did really well in all my tests. I studied really hard. I still have two more tests to go, but I wanted to show mommy and daddy. Maybe they will become happy if they see how smart I am. But mommy was angry and said daddy wasn't coming home at home anymore. Did daddy get a timeout? I miss daddy. Sometimes I smell his favorite bottle just to... That's why she has a bottle of beer. What do you used to smell like? Mommy got so upset when she saw the bottle, she made me throw them away. I secretly kept one. Mommy's so busy, I don't really like having babysitters. If only Daddy and Mommy could make up, but it's too late. Mommy and Daddy are liars. They told me I always need to make up with my friends when we fight. They told me to forgive Sarah whenever she takes and breaks my stuff, but they don't make up, even though they aren't together anymore. I still hear them fighting over the phone. Mommy says she's going to keep Daddy away from us. Daddy says he's going to rescue us from Mommy. Why can't they just stay together? Okay, maybe the dad broke in. Hmm. So the dad was an alcoholic? Yeah, definitely smelled of beer all the time. Okay, the jewelry is still here, so... It wasn't like... A robbery. I only see money back guarantee. What is this? Aspirin? Band-aids. Okay, so all that paperwork doesn't matter. A restraining order. Name of restrained person, Clyde. Filed February 2004. Do you think Clyde had like all those addresses in his wallet? Because he was trying to hunt them down. Two calculators? <laughs> I don't even have one. <laughs> you have your phone. But I guess this was 2004, so... Do we have messages? Enter desired phone number and press OK or pick up receiver to call. Call log yesterday. They're all different numbers. So no one was like repeatedly calling. No one left a voicemail or anything? No. Okay. Ooh, emails. Uh, this is the oldest one. You did all you could. There was nothing more you could have done. Personally, I'm glad it's all over. I don't care if he stays in jail or not. He can rot in there for all I care. I feel like you need time to heal and move on. If you need to talk or need help with the kids, you know how to reach me. Loris? Hi, Miss Peterson. Unfortunately, I won't be able to help you this month as I'll be out of town for most of July. However, I do have a good friend who thinks, who I think will be perfect for a job. She's a good track record and can personally vouch for her. Do 853. So that's the new babysitter? We received your request to change your address and name. We have processed the change to your address, Six or Highcrest. That's this new address? The updated address will show on your new bank statement. However, in order to properly have your name changed, we will have to ask you to stop by a local branch with a legal government-issued ID. Okay. Uh, schedule change. Hi, Brenda. Unfortunately, your schedule slightly changed. With the care center being un understaffed, we will have to ask you to come Wednesday and Thursday. The hours will still rem remain your standard hours. So that's her work. That's something? Oh, here, contacts. 2853, Lillian Choi. Might be the babysitter. And she's really keeping track of what her baby does. Buy more formula, diapers, make appointments with doctor for Sarah's vaccination. Buy Greta paint, 
Sangreda's forms, buy new Tupperware. From what I see, it seems like she was really trying to just be a good mom. Yeah, the fact that Greta has like a little paint area is really nice. She was doing really good at school. With the wrong motivation, but... Do you think she painted that? That would be really impressive. <laughs> we can see if she was at work. Yeah, there's also this yellow mark. I wonder if they went away, maybe? And she bought a ring... The 8th of July? A wedding ring. She sold it? Oh, she sold it. That would make sense. The fact that the baby monitor was here with some food and stuff makes me think that she was just watching TV or something when it happened. When someone came in through the window. But if Clyde wanted the kids, why would he go here? And rummage through things. Oh, another bullet casing. Wait, so two shots were fired? Three shots were fired. Oh, but this is a wilder. So... They both had guns? I wonder if there's anything else I can find or if we're supposed to be able mm -hmm. to... answer these questions now. Who was present during the break-in? Maybe Brenda was away at camp? July 14th to 21. That's the yellow line. That's her away at camp. Okay, so we have one casing of a stranger's gun and two casings of the house gun. That we can see, at least. Which is weird, because it's like... Don't you keep a gun in a safe? Like, how ready were you to... Shoot someone? But yeah, we know someone was trying to get the address. Oh, here it is. 9mm Viper Fire. The Thunder M2. Was that the one in the safe? Is it? I don't... I can't tell. Is it? Is that the same gun? Side of the bookcase in the office. Oh. You're right. Wow, how did you see that? So it looks like he came in through the window, went here for some reason to try and find something. And then she fired shots. She fired two shots, but one from here. Someone dialed 911. Oh, yeah. Is it at this time? I don't think so. So, would this be his gun, then, that he dropped? Assuming that he died and not she did. Okay, let's see. So... Hmm. We know- we think that Clyde broke in, right? Because it is, like, a big footprint as well. And this is her house. Who was present during the break-in? When was the... There was the little note to be like, you take care of the baby. There's no date on this. There's this note. I will be home. 1516? When do we think it happened? Oh. 15th? Or 16th? Depending on when she likes to scratch off the days. Either 15th at night or the next morning at 16. Mm. 
So the last phone call... Oh. It says yesterday or a date, so it can't... That doesn't help us. Oh yeah, wait, the email. That was the 1st of July. I'll be out of town for most of it. Do you think the babysitter was home? I don't think the babysitter would have shot him, though. Babysitter wouldn't have gone. Yeah, I don't think the babysitter would have access to the safe. Is there a gun in here? <laughs> Do we know what time the break-in was? I don't know if this is like the moment of the crime or if we, this is like, well, it has to be after the fact, right? Because they marked the floor and stuff and they took the body away. Well, from the break-in has receipts. The 16th, 11 a.m. God, 11 a.m., beer and smokes. Okay, so we know it has to have been the 16th. So who was present on the 16th? Oh, wait, uh, what day was the 16th? It was a Friday. Well, you can run so fast if you want to. So she wasn't working. I think Brenda was home. Brenda and Sarah were home? Maybe? Do I put it in like that? Oh no, wait. I made that mistake mistake before. It's like that. Okay, who was killed? I think Clyde? Or could it be Brenda who got killed? Clyde definitely brought a gun of his own and broke in, so that feels like he had an intent to kill. I mean, we can also always refill, like, try again if we get too much wrong, so. Three out of four. Which case file would you like to tackle? Three out of four. So we got one. Clyde was present as well. I wonder if we have to fill that in, yeah. Yeah, okay. So we actually had exactly the right idea. Cool. Which case file? Good start. So, okay, we have a pretty good grasp on what's happened so far. Let's see what the follow-up is about. A gathering of friends at a dinner party, a dead body amidst the celebration. Can you figure out what happened? So this is that demo that we played. Do, you, do we remember? <laughs> so now we're passing 401. To go to the neighbors. Yeah, this is the demo for two. I wonder how much they changed. Wasn't it like the dude had a baby with someone else, forced an abortion? Yeah, this was on Valentine's. Ah, uh, I don't remember exactly though. It was like someone's lipstick. Pink lilac. Leaves no marks and no smears, but there is a smear on the glass. And the matches from Sling's kitchen, which was the date location. I'm trying to like... Put it all together. Someone had an allergy, so one person was drinking juice instead of wine. There. There's the drink, the lipstick. But the, uh, yeah, it was like the lipstick doesn't smear. It was definitely poisoning. They coughed it up. There was a note somewhere about the seating arrangement. 
Here, my cousin cannot drink anything with alcohol. Serve him something else instead. James is left-handed. Victor, James, and Carol. Wow, food. Okay, can't go in there. Oh, I think this is new. Ronnie. I can't actually go in. Happy birthday, Jess. Thank you for all the support while I was in AA. Ronnie is a lucky man to have you. So Jess and Ronnie are together. Okay. Happy birthday to the most beautiful woman in the world. And then there was like, oh god, I'm trying to remember. It's been a month since you came to visit me. Remember what we talked about. I think it's time you ended things with him. You endured for too long and need to move on. Jess. And her mom. New York restaurant guide. What's that? Just a bookmark. Celine's kitchen. The country of love itself. It's weird how I remember some things from this case, but not enough to be like, oh yeah, it was this, this, and this. Ooh, Ronnie leaves for New Orleans, appointment with Dr. Richardson. Ronnie returns from company trip, Jessica's birthday. So this is her birthday dinner? Because there's gifts. Is that another card? Can't open that one. Nothing under there. Something in the trash? Nope. I remember there being like a receipt or something. Beef stew. It's just a recipe. Happy holidays, Merry Christmas. Da Vinci? Is that wine or is that a different drink in there? Doesn't look the same. They changed some of the information because I remember having like... Or maybe there's something in here? No. I remember having some information about like... Someone got pregnant. And then got forced to have an abortion. But we can't find... There's no, like, wallet with receipts or anything. So. We have Jess and Ronnie. Victor, James, and Carol. Um, James is left-handed. Cousin can't drink. So this is the cousin. And the cousin can't drink because he was in AA. Victor. Victor is the drinker. So Victor is the one with the mug. I think we said that maybe this is probably Jess because it was her birthday. So she would be at the head of the table. I guess they have numbers. So one is Victor. Then it, oh, James was left-handed. Yeah. So the fact that they put on a note must mean that they were considerate enough to change... The spoon here is on the left side, but there as well. But here it's on the right side. Left side, left side. So... Is number five James? Then... Her lipstick doesn't smear. Nicotine patch. Is that all that's in there? Ronnie. So... Wait, how do we actually know that this isn't Jess's handbag? Dr. Richardson. We need to find out what he's a doctor of. Take Ronnie's wallet again. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is his wallet. Okay. He bought the wine. Box of chocolates. 
Terry Charleston. Richardson. Director of the hospital. And he went to Celine's kitchen on the 14th for Valentine. Abortion clinic? Wait, where does it say that? Oh, right under there. Yeah. So that wasn't the doctor that she was going to see. That's a different name. What are the questions? So, oh, how many people live in the apartment? Two. Who is Jessica's cousin, James? No, it was Victor. Uh, who sat in chair number four? Who was killed? Who was the killer? Chair number four. James is five. Victor is one. This is chair number four. For some reason, we can look at the dirty napkin. I think this might be Carol's seat? Because maybe she's pregnant and isn't drinking wine. That is wine. It looks so light compared to the other ones. Oh, never mind. It's wine. Just had to l look at it from a different angle. So it's a bit weird, but I remember this being Carol's handbag, right? She has this smudge free lipstick, so. Um, if this was Ronnie, then Jess got killed. And Carol is the killer? But yeah, this is a bit weird. This is mostly because we've played, yeah, five of five, because we played the demo. So if if you haven't seen us play the demo, you can always go back. The video is still on YouTube. Um, Which case file would you like to, to get more of a full experience? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it was more like we just remembered. So. Carol and Ron Ronnie was cheating on Jess with Carol. They got a Carol got pregnant, was forced to get an abortion, but then murdered. She poisoned Jess because she wanted Ronnie for herself. Group of teens celebrated at a friend's apartment. One was killed. No one admitted to seeing the killer. Can you figure out what happened? Man. This is an eventful floor. Can you imagine all of that happening here? Okay. Four or three teenagers. Fizzy pop. Super duper mega giga. <laughs> uh, oh. Oh. Sports. Grease on the elbow. Is that drumming? What is this? It's not piano. So tennis. Oh, and there's drumsticks. Tennis and drumming. Some napkins, some drinks. Definitely a student's apartment. Oh. Are these EpiPens? Oh, asthma. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Carter, welcome to Noble's 2003 Summer School. Your students schedule for Noble's uh, Super Academic Summer Academic Program. Schedule includes the course number, name, and teacher assignment. Once students have picked up their summer school package and submitted their pass form, they will be ready to start. The program offers students the option of earning credits and beginning the school year in line to graduate with their class and close their summer course list. Okay. Summer school starts June 3rd, I think. I feel like these cases aren't connected. Maybe they will be, but I'm going to take a risk and delete everything. Um, and ends after classes on Friday, August 1st. Please note that your student number school grade does not replace any failing grade earned in your school year. Summer school course allows your student to earn credit to meet specific graduation requirements. So is it like extra school time for people who failed their year to make up for the stuff that they failed? Okay. Oh, the questions you want to see? <laughs> who died? Who was the second last to arrive? Who's the owner of the blue sports bag? And who is the killer? 
Okay. Lisa. We have a name. How to survive on your own. Huh. Pizza. <laughs> Chippers. <laughs> oh, there's another cup. Jack. Brian. Brian. Anything in the trash? Nope. Girls only. Ooh, we can go in here. Ooh, we can go in everything. Oh! We can go everywhere. Okay, wait. Let's check out the living room first then. Eric? I think we have our cast now. Andrew? Oh, there's more. Whoa, that's an N64 right there. PS1. Damn. They got it going on. Is that a shoe? <laughs> Why is there one shoe there? The wolf pack. Okay, I think that's about it for here for now. S let's work our way clockwise. Nothing really of note in here. Some lenses, contacts. Summer Championship Tennis. So this is the owner of the sports bag. The blue bag. Kitty Lover 54. <laughs> Guess who I saw trying to walk home with Christy today? You're definitely overreacting. Girl, I'm telling you, he's 100% into Christy. I bet you that's the only reason he joined the tennis club. Christy? Maybe. If it is, thank God he did. He's one of our best players. He's going to have a tough time getting through her brothers. I know all of them. They're all pretty nice guys. I don't know if you heard, but word is going around that Christy was sexually assaulted by someone at school. She hasn't been to school in a few days. What? You better not be joking. What's the school doing about it? They haven't issued any statement. Hopefully it's nothing. You know how she is. She's such a drama queen. You're lucky you have your brother. What's that supposed to mean? He's a big guy. Even guys are intimidated by him. The perfect creep deterrent. Hmm. Have you heard from Christy? She hasn't been to school in a few days. She's not picking up. You haven't heard? Casey told me. Cassie. She's sex sexually assaulted by someone. What the fuck? Please tell me they caught this um, mofo. Easy there, cowboy. It's just a rumor and the school hasn't said anything. Hopefully it's nothing. Since Christy is graduating this year, we'll need a new captain. I think you'd be a good fit. What do you think? I was hoping you'd be up for the task. Let's talk about it tomorrow at school. I gotta go. As you all know, a few of us are going to be graduating. We're gonna have a grad party at our place, 7 p.m. on Saturday. Is that this place? Let's go! I'm bringing drinks. Why can't we all just go to the arcade? Arcade? Really? I don't understand how you enjoy that boring place. And what? Chugging a whole bottle of Cordial Light is fun for you? I think the arcade's fine. Chill, guys. I already made the preparations. I just want us to enjoy our last time as high schoolers together. Mm. Someone needs to watch over Eric. Make sure he doesn't drink so much. You barfed all over the couch, you boozer. It took me a week to get rid of the smell. I'll be more careful next time. So, Strikers is Eric. Uh, we'll see each other this coming Saturday. If you have questions, message the group chat. What time are we gathering again? Scroll up. <laughs> Racket scientists. Hey guys, even though school's over, do you guys still want to meet up and practice? I'm fine meeting up, but my family and I are going to be out of town. End of July. Anybody else? Hmm. Okay. We still don't know who Kitty Lover is. Regional match, practice exam, finals, tennis club, preparation day. Nothing in the trash. Holmes and mystery. Doggy. Candy. 
soup kitchen. Okay, not a whole lot to go by yet. Keys. School District of Queens. Brian Olson. Sexual harassment of other student. He was the one? Suspension resulted. Number of days undetermined. Suspension. Following violation. Sexual harassment of other student. Student reported that Brian Olsen had sexually assaulted her. These are serious allegations, so the school contact with law enforcement and an investigation will be conducted. We ask that all parties involved keep this to themselves until the investigation has concluded. The parents of both parties have been notified. The conference has been scheduled. Student must return to school with the parent guardian listed on the school computer network. If this is not convenient, parents should call the school to reschedule. Do you think maybe Brian was going to the summer school bit because he was suspended, so he missed out on a lot of classes? Front door. Gamer boy. <laughs> Can you come over to my place? I want to go over bass arrangements for the new song. Come over after five. I'll be at my dad's store till then. Do you think your dad will be willing to be a sponsor for our next gig? Gracie faxed you something. Did you get it? What am I looking at? Came in today. Keep this between us. I don't want anyone else to know about it. Is this true? Of course not. You think I'd be sharing it if it was true? I bet you a million it was Christy. I was thinking the same. Can you talk to her? I swear I'm gonna kill her next time I see her. Calm down. Don't make this worse than this. Just talk to her. Only she can make this go away. Hmm. Okay. Dude, you can't just bail. I'm really sorry something came up. We can't practice without a drummer and you're the only one who knows how to play. Do you think it's Brian's back then? We need to practice. Can we meet up? No can do. I have a track meet on Tuesday. This is Eric. Strikers. Can't do Tuesday either. I agreed to help my dad at his store. Thursday. A few of us are going to be graduating. We're going to have a grab party at our place 7pm on Saturday. This is the same one we read before. Their band is the Dead Iron Clad Killers. <laughs> Brian, Eric, Andrew, and Jack. So they were all here drinking. Except Lisa. Maybe it's Lisa's room? Maybe Lisa's kitty lover. Oh, damn. <gasps> the Wilder! Oh! It's the same gun! We only found one gun at the scene. What if the gun got dump dumped and then someone picked it up to use it? Okay, since there's drumsticks in here, uh, I'm gonna say that it's Brian's bag. And I think Brian died, but honestly, I don't know yet. Eric's cup is on the floor. <laughs> They're out there. I didn't even see that yet. We can't practice without a drummer. Oh, he said you can't bail. Jester is the drummer. Oh, my bad. So Jack and Andrew are left. So either Gamer Boy or Jester. And then Eric is Striker, so Eric thinks it's boring. We haven't found Gracie 59 yet. That could be Lisa as well. We have Gracie and Kitty Lover. More doc documents in the menu. Bottom menu. Oh, interview of suspect. Did we have those? Did we have these last time as well? We just haven't used these at all. Christy Carter. 
Pink, can you please answer my question? What was the question again? Did you go to see Brian on the 31st of May? No. Did you have any physical contact with him at all during this week? No. When was the last time you met or spoke with Brian? A week and a half ago. Are you aware that Mr. Brian Olson is dead? Are you sure? He was killed last night in his apartment. Where were you on the night of the third? Okay, so Brian is the dead guy. Uh, this is wrong. Jack. So you're also in the band. I play the bass. I also play guitar, but I usually end up playing bass. Okay, so he's not the drummer. So Andrew must be the drummer then. Actually, no, it could be Eric as well. Um, how's your relationship with Brian? Honestly, he's more of Eric's friend than mine. Eric and I have known each other since elementary and have been tight since. Eric introduced me to Brian in high school and we started playing together. Can you go over your accounts of the incident? I was working for most of the day. I eventually left and I headed to Brian's place. Bumped into Grace at the lobby and we both went up together. So Grace and Jack. Uh, I don't have Grace here at all. They got there at 6.45. Do you recall seeing anyone right before entering? I mean, other than the guy at the front desk, all of us had something to drink, so something might be unclear. I do remember Grace was pretty obnoxious the whole night. After I finished my drink, I left the apartment. Why'd you leave? I mentioned to the other officer, Brian was smoking heavily and I can't stand the smell. Went back home. Was anybody with you at the time? No, not even the man at the front desk. Look, this is getting annoying. I didn't do anything wrong. Lisa. I'm one of the tenants of the apartment. Oh, so this is Lisa's room then. Okay. So she's kitty lover. Uh, how close are you with your brother? Close enough. We don't talk about deep things or anything. He keeps to himself. Allegations. What allegations? Out of all the attendees, has anyone, any of them shown violent behavior or tendencies? Violent? Not really. Well, actually, Andrew's been suspended a few times for getting into fights. When was the last time he got in a fight? Last week, he and this other guy were fighting over a girl. Wait, you guys don't actually think he did it, right? Do you usually lock the door for your room? Yes, I like to keep my room private. Brian sometimes has friends over, so I lock it anytime I have to head out. But you said you lost your key. I was coming back from a friend's house, and I must have accidentally left it there. What time did you leave your friend's house? 6.30. So how did you get into the apartment? Well, it was open. Most of them were already inside. Brian must have let them in. What time did you arrive? Seven. So she came after Grace and Jack. Do you keep a spare key? Yes, on the kitchen wall, but it was missing. Someone must have taken it. Can you recall exactly when you noticed it missing? I checked as soon as I came back, but it was already gone. How'd you get into your room? Brian used his key to let me in. Do you often have parties at your apartment? Yes, mostly for special occasions, sometimes just to hang out on the weekend. Is there often alcohol involved? Yes. Andrew usually buys the drinks for us. Can you repeat what you just told us? I was asleep. I woke up. It was dark. I went to the restroom. That's when I saw him lying there in his room. I don't didn't know what to do. She didn't hear the gunshot? Then what happened? Panicked and screamed. Moment late, moments later, Andrew was running by. He gave me a panic attack. Wait, Andrew came running by? Where from? Do you have any suspicion as to who this murderer could be? We're all good friends. Okay, Andrew, where were you? I arrived at the apartment around the same time as Lisa and everybody was already there. So he was there at 7 too. I don't know. I, th I thought you have all the answers. It's after midnight. Tired as hell. I gotta go soon. I was in the toilet puking for quite a bit and then I woke up Eric. Where was Jack during this time? I don't know. None of us saw him for the rest of the night. That was the guy who left, right? Because he couldn't stand the smell. You were the one who brought the drinks to the party, correct? Yes. You're not old enough to drink. How'd you purchase them? No answer. Did you contaminate the drinks? What? Of course I didn't contaminate the drinks. You do know that underage drinking or purchase of alcohol is a misdemeanor. Really? That's all you got? I thought you guys were trying to solve a murder. Get serious. This is a complete waste of time. Grace, can you elaborate more on your relationship with Brian? I already told you, he and I have been dating for about a year and things are going well. 
Can you tell me your accounts of the evening? Christy is 100% guilty here. That lying bitch has been trying to get in between Brian and I ever since we got together. She can't stomach that he chose me and not her. I'm telling you, the girl is batshit psycho. But in the interview, she said, like, she didn't press charges, right? Please calm down, Mrs. Burns. Don't tell me to calm down. The girl should be behind bars. Just answer the question. Fine. I arrived at the apartment same time as Jack. So 6.45. Yeah. We got out of the elevator just in time to see Christy leave the apartment and run off. Oh. Why the hell was she even there? Hmm. So Christy was there. Please focus. Are you sure you saw Miss Carter leave the apartment? 100%. She's the only girl in this world who has dyed green hair and braids her hair like that. After Andrew came with the drinks, we all started to play a drinking game. This went on for most of the night and I eventually knocked out. Can you recall if anyone passed out before you did? I can't. I completely blacked out. I guess I must have drank a bit too much because the cops already arrived by the time I woke up. Hmm. Convenient blackout. Do you think she could have shot him because she was he was cheating with Christy? Eric, can you please account when you and the others arrived? I know I was the fourth to arrive. Brian, Grace, and Jack were already there. Brian, Grace, and Jack. So he came, but he but Lisa wasn't there yet. So he came in between that. Must have been around 650 then. 655. I must have missed something because Grace's attitude was off the entire time. Maybe Grace and Brian had a fight. I have no idea. I was super glad when Lisa arrived. She always livens the mood. I think Andrew was the last to come. He's always late for everything. Okay. So Lisa and Andrew were the last to come in at 7. Were you drinking that night? We all were. Grace usually doesn't drink that much, but that night she was chugging as if there was no tomorrow. Anything to note of that night? I'm not sure how drunk it was, but I do remember Jack and Brian were arguing for a bit. Things got pretty heated, but Brian eventually got up and locked himself in his room. You were the one who called 911, correct? Yes. It says here on the report that you discovered the body and called law enforcement after two hours. Why did it take you so long for to call? Because Andrew was against it. Why is he against calling? Oh, the underage drinking. I know he's a little dumb at times, but trust me, he didn't do this. Mic stopped working. What part of it I don't remember much do you not understand? Please calm down. I was drinking heavily that night. I must have passed out because the next moment I remember was Andrew waking me up by pouring water on my face. Lisa tells me he had a pretty big argument with Brian last week. What was it about? He was on my case about interrupting rehearsals with my mistakes. I've been busy recently, so I haven't had much time to practice. But come on, there's no way I'll kill him over something like that. I have my pride as a musician. I was going to show him up with my performance. Hmm. Okay, but Eric is not Jester, so he's not the drummer. <laughs> Um, so the question was, who was second last to arrive? So that has to be Lisa or Andrew. Um, most of them were already inside around seven. Around the same time as Lisa, and everybody was already there. Hmm. Everybody was already there, so maybe he was the last one, and Lisa was second to last? So I think Lisa... Second to last. Okay. Who's the owner of the blue sports bag, and who is the killer? I can't believe he got shot with the same caliber gun. Oh yeah, and he has the guitar, so he's not the drummer. There must be some way we can cross-reference all these messages to find out who is who. I wonder if Grace 
Maybe just got so drunk that she thought she was shooting Christy when she didn't. Yeah, and we know... Wait, uh, let's go here first. This is Lisa's room. So Lisa has to be Kitty Lover. So Jester was looking for Christy. You're lucky you have your brother. Are Brian and Lisa maybe brother and sister? Because the drummer plays tennis too. So I'm wondering... And then here she says... He's so into Christy, he only joined the tennis club to be with her. The interview stated that. Let me see. She's also... Christy's very surprised that Brian died. Yeah, she left the party early. Because that's why Grace was all upset. Because she saw her leave when they came in. So she wasn't anywhere near them. Jack is the bass player, so he can't be the drummer. And Brian is guitar... So we have Eric and Andrew. Andrew doesn't say, right? I'm also really surprised that she's that Lisa says, I was asleep, I woke up, it was dark, I went to the restroom, that's when I saw him lying there. Panicked and screamed, moments later, Andrew came running by. But then Andrew says that he was puking for most of it, right? Yeah. And then you woke up Eric. The two were fighting not to tell- yeah, they were arguing whether or not to call the police. Grace has the convenient blackout. Andrew was the last to come, he's always late for everything. So how are we gonna figure out the last couple ones? Lord Killer? No idea. We need to find out who Jester and Gamer Boy are. Gamer Boy is not that into drinking. So I don't think he would be Andrew, because Andrew was puking the whole night, so he definitely drank way too much. That would make Gamer Boy Jack, I think. Andrew is bringing the drinks. Right, Andrew is the one buying the drinks, so there's no way he could be like, Really? Drinking? Why can't we just do something else? Oh, Jester, I'm drink- oh, obviously. Jester says, I'm bringing the drinks. Andrew is the buyer of the drinks, so Andrew is Jester, which- means that Andrew was in touch with Christy and got really upset that she might have been sexually assaulted and then he Andrew's the one walking Christy home he's really good at tennis but he only joined for Christy so it's Andrew's back Okay, we have... This is pretty solid, I think, so far. Ryan got shot. Lisa was the second last to arrive. Andrew was really into Christy, enjoyed the tennis club for her. And he was the drummer, always late to arrive, got the booze. Now, who killed Brian? Oh, it could be Andrew if he thinks that Brian is the one who assaulted Christy. Christy's definitely not the killer, because she was there, but she didn't seem to have any grudge against Brian and even said to the police that she, they never were physical in any way. Christy stole the spare key. Oh, spike the drink so everyone get blackout. Oh, that is a possibility, actually. Oh, wait, yeah. When was the last time you met or spoke with Brian? Maybe a week and a half ago. He was killed last night in his apartment. She says she hasn't seen him at all, but then Grace is all upset. Christy is 100% guilty. I arrived at the apartment, we got out of the elevator just in time to see Christy leave the apartment and run off. Grace arrived at 6.45, saw Christy leave. Lisa came in at 7 and said the key was gone. You guys are right. Oh my god. So Christy must have taken the key to come back at a later time. I don't think the drinks were spiked, no, because she left before Andrew came with the drinks. And Brian was just shot. I think she just waited until the middle of the night, snuck in and shot him. Oh, and the spare key is here. So yeah, definitely. So whoever came in... 
Because Brian got upset, right? And locked himself in his room. And she had the spare key to come in. And there's only one killer. So if I had to guess, I would say Christy. Ooh, three of four. So maybe Andrew, but if it was Andrew, it would make no sense for Christy to come back and use the key. Unless Andrew just didn't have any keys and wanted to get into Brian's apartment. Because I think the other three are like solid. I think these are correct. I guess we could try and change it and see if it's still three or four and then we know. The only motive I can think of if it's not Christy is that it's Andrew jumping to conclusions because he was really into Christy. There was the rumor that Christy um, got assaulted. How would Andrew know it was Brian? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Only if Grace got so drunk that she was talking about it. Like, I can see Grace getting super drunk and then being like, Oh, that bitch, Christy. She did this and this. Can you believe that? And then... Andrew's like, shit. I'm really into her. I gotta protect my girl. Or he went into the room and saw this, honestly. What I can do is just put Andrew here and see if it's still three or four. Okay, so it is the killer question. And it's not Chrissy or Andrew. <laughs> Brenda, the baby. <laughs> Sarah. <laughs> Sarah took the gun, crawled over to the neighbor's place and shot him. <laughs> so we haven't really looked at Jack. Eric. Brian's more of Eric's friend than mine. Eric and I have known each other since elementary. Also, Eric is the one who wanted to call the cops, right? You were the one who called 911. So that makes him less suspicious, honestly. Even, especially if Andrew was against calling. Because um, he had... Basically, Andrew gave him an out. A reason not to call the cops. So he could have easily gone along with that. If he was guilty, I feel like... He wouldn't have called 911. Do you recall seeing anyone right before entering the apartment? No. Wait... I bumped into Grace at the lobby. We both went up together. He didn't see anyone. And then Grace is like... I arrived at the apartment with Jack. We got out of the elevator just in time to see Christy leave the apartment and run off. How does he not remember seeing that? I feel like Grace would have made a scene. So Grace is inventing Christy being there. Because Christy is just like... I was at home. So maybe she was never there to begin with. And, like I said before, when I first read this, she com conveniently blacked out. But what would be her motivation? Why would she want to get rid of her boyfriend? What if Grace even made up- Oh, what if Grace even made up the allegations? Because Christy says she never- She never even interacted with Brian at all. Maybe spoke to him a week and a half ago. So it doesn't make sense that she would file the report. But there is a report in his room. So someone definitely reported a sexual assault. And of course it's anonymous. Check the emails Grace sent the report. We don't have Grace's emails though, do we? We only have Brian's laptop and Lisa's. I bet you a million it was Christy. Hmm. So she's the one who suggested Christy. I think Jack is helping Christy, which is why he didn't mention seeing her. Hmm. Yeah, it could either. It could go both way. I'm gonna try Grace. Because I think uh, she she's lying about something. Hmm, okay, not Grace. This game makes me think, yeah, I, I feel like I'm like stretching and I, I'm 
I feel like I'm coming up with a motive for all of them. And I'm wrong every time. So it was Jack. Okay, I still want to revisit it though. Now knowing it's Jack, I need to look at it again. <laughs> I think from the spare keys being in the door, we knew it had to be someone who was there before Lisa came at seven, because Lisa knew the keys were missing. Andrew came after her, so that leaves Grace and Jack. And Grace is the girlfriend. Do you think Jack is Christy's brother? I wish they explained the case. Me too. I feel like that's the one thing I'm really missing. I wish it would show, like, you know from this file and this that you can conclude these things from this or something. But yeah, it is in that bit, right? It has to be Grace and Jack arriving together. Grace saying she saw Christy leave, Jack not even mentioning her. And saying he left early, went back home... Was anybody with you? Can anyone corroborate? No. Not even the man at the front desk. This is getting annoying. You got nothing on me. So not even the man at the front desk saw him leave. Maybe he never left. Maybe he's just saying he left. But yeah, there are some... There, I'm sure when we played the other case as well, people watching had like perfect answers and they really explained everything really well. So I, I'm... I'm kind of hoping that this is the same once we publish it <laughs> on YouTube. People will be like, because right, right now I'm like, where did Jack even get the gun? What is his motivation? Why did he kill him? If he went home, then Christy would have seen him there because she was at home, right? How do we even know that they're brother and sister? <laughs> Mr. and Miss Carter. Christy's last name is Carter in the interview. Oh, Miss Carter. Oh. I see. Oh, okay. Wow. That is difficult. So from this interview, Miss Carter, and then seeing that in the backpack saying Carter, you know that there has to be a Carter at the party. That's not Christy. Who went to summer school? Damn. Okay. Devil's in the details, yeah. That's very sneaky. I am getting worried. Because that was only a star and a half. <laughs> and the next one is two. And I'm sure the last one is three. It's gonna break my brain. <laughs> I thought these were already so difficult. <laughs> but hey, we did it, I think. Four, four, five, five, four, four. It doesn't say it's done, though. Like here it says grade, we have a grade. Maybe I should finish it properly? Guess I keep going back to it. I might have to submit it and close it. Done. Yeah. Oh, if you were granted the power to pardon one of the perpetrators, who would you choose? Oh god. Probably for a one? Because it was the mom who shot the dad, right? And she had a restraining order and everything. He broke in. For a two, definitely not, because that's just poisoning. Thank you for your submission. Nice. Oh, here, case file report. At approximately 11 p.m. on July 16th, Clyde Peterson broke into an apartment. The apartment is currently being rented by his ex-wife, Brenda Peterson, now known as Brenda Sherman. The noise that Clyde made when he knocked over the planter woke up the sleeping baby. The baby's crying alerted Brenda, Brenda who was resting on a couch in the living room. Uh, that's what I said, yeah. The intruder tried to calm the baby before making his way into the next room. Brenda, hearing everything from the baby monitor, observed the intruder heading into her study room. She then quietly made her way to the safe inside the closet to retrieve her gun. Armed, she then confronted the intruder who was desperately searching for something inside her study room. 
Upon opening the door to her study, she recognized the intruder, her ex-husband Clyde. While aiming her gun towards Clyde, she moved closer to her landline at her desk and tried to call 911. Before she could finish, Clyde pulled out his own gun. A startled Brenda then fired two bullets. He accidentally fired one shot, which hit the, which hit the side of the shelf. Still alive, he tried to crawl away. Brenda walked up to Clyde, shot him in the head, and killed him. Damn. What was he looking for, though? Why would he go to the study if he didn't want the kids? That It doesn't answer that. Like, what was he looking for? Oh, the ring. It was expensive. Yeah, maybe he was looking for the wedding ring that she already pawned. He would need their birth certificates and social security cards if he intended to take them and start over elsewhere. Oh, could be that too. 4-2. April 24th, 7pm, Jessica and her husband Ronnie hosted a small dinner gathering celebration, celebrating Jessica's birthday. Carol, Victor and James were the guests, however James didn't end up showing. Unbeknownst to the rest, Ronnie had an affair with Carol. Through the affair, Carol ended up being pregnant with Ronnie's child. Ronnie started having second thoughts about the affair and intended to have the baby aborted. Carol, fearful of losing Ronnie, decided to take action against the other person, person in the equation, Jessica. During the gathering, Carol had brought a dose of lethal medication. She poisoned her cup, and when no one was looking, she switched her cup with Jessica's. Jessica drank the lethal medication and succumbed to the poison. Okay. Then the last one, Andrew, Brian, Eric, Grace, Jack, and Lisa gathered at an apartment to celebrate their graduation. Brian and Lisa, brother and sister, are Brian and Lisa. Oh yeah, are the current tenants of the apartment. Brian is currently dating Grace. Jack has a younger sister named Christy who has feelings for Brian. Does she? Prior to the events of June first, Brian had a false yet damning allegation thrown towards him. In a fit of jealousy and to stir up drama, Christy al alleged that Brian had sexually assaulted her on school grounds. Oh, so she really just couldn't deal with him being with Grace. This allegation caused Brian to be suspended from school while the faculty and authorities investigated the matter. Unaware of the allegations being false, Jack plotted to take matters into his own hands. For the day of the celebration, Brian had arrived at the apartment first. Christy stopped by before anyone else arrived to talk to Brian privately. Christy eventually left and soon after everyone else arrived. Grace and Brian had an argument which prompted Brian to retreat to his room. Brian had opened the pack of cigarettes and smoked a few. Jack had left the apartment due to being sensitive to smoking. Jack returned to find everyone wasted and knocked out. Jack took the opportunity to confront Brian who was still in his room at the time. After a brief confrontation, confrontation Jack shot Brian. Stunned at what he had just done, Jack ran out of the apartment. Hmm... There, now it's officially done. So this one we'll keep for another time. Because my brain is done. <laughs>